In the vast and shadowed expanse of Tolkien's universe, power comes in forms both magnificent and terrifying. From the soaring heights of divine might to the darkest depths of corruption, there are beings whose sheer force of will reshaped the very fabric of reality. But what defines true power in a world where even the greatest forces can be twisted by darkness? Prepare to confront the ultimate manifestations of power, where even the mightiest are not immune to the encroaching abyss with the most powerful beings ever in Tolkien's universe. Starting at number 9, Feanor, one of the greatest craftsmen in Middle-earth, was a figure of immense power and tragedy. Born under the light of the two trees of Valinor, his genius rivaled even the wisdom of the Valar. He forged the Silmarils, the three most radiant jewels, capturing the essence of that light. No greater work had ever been wrought, and with their creation, his name became legendary. But this creation came with a pretty high cost, as the Silmarils became both his pride and his downfall. When dark emo goth lord edgelord Morgoth coveted him, well, he wreaked havoc in Valinor, killing Feanor's father and stealing the jewels. Consumed by rage, Feanor defied Morgoth and the Valar, accusing them of indifference. In a moment of wrath, he swore the oath of Feanor, vowing to pursue anybody who held the Silmarils, cursing his bloodline and igniting a whole chain of events of destruction in Middle-earth all because he couldn't stop holding the family jewels. Yeah, his defiance wasn't just revenge, but kind of an entire challenge to the Valar, showcasing his power, but also sowing the seeds of his own doom. His unchecked pride led to exile and war, leaving a trail of death and betrayal behind. His confrontation with Morgoth's forces ended in his demise, consumed by the very flames that fueled his ambition. That's kind of a grand metaphor for like, AKA, don't be a prick, right? And yet, for the poor guy, the Silmarils remained forever out of touch. You know, symbols of the untamable fire within his heart. His legacy, like the jewels that he created, was one of brilliance and devastation. An unquenchable flame too bright for the world to contain. At number eight, Melian, a Maya of incomprehensible power descended from the undying lands with a presence that could warp the very fabric of Middle-earth. Her beauty cloaked a terrifying force, one that pulsed beneath the surface, commanding nature and bending the will of the world itself. She was no mere guardian. She was a force of the divine, her power seeping into the earth like a slow, inevitable tide of dominion. Kinda sounds like my ex-wife. Anywho, ha, over in Dariath. She wove her enchantment into the land, creating the Girdle of Malayan, a barrier that defied darkness and death itself, kind of like an old-school chastity belt. This impenetrable shield wasn't just magic, it was her essence, a manifestation of a being older than time, making Dryat the fortress of unfathomable wealth and unreachable strength. The treasures within its hordes, jewels, relics, and secrets older than the moon, were protected by powers that few dared challenge. And yet, beneath the shimmering beauty of her enchantments, there lurked a warning. No power, no matter how ancient, is free from the shadows that creep at the edge of the world. For all of her vast power, even she could not stave off the doom bound to the cursed Silmarils. The jewel, forged in pride and obsession, seeped its poison into the land, and though her enchantments held firm, Dryath's fate was already sealed. When she departed, she left behind a world unguarded from the terrors that her magic had long held at bay. The girdle dissolved, her protection vanished, and the kingdom was laid bare to ruin, and if that's not a euphemism, I don't know what is. She later returned to Valinor, to the timeless halls of the Ainur, but the scars of her absence lingered. It wasn't her failure, but it was a grim revelation of the darkness that she'd once contained for everybody. Kinda goes to show what happens when she's done, am I right? Found at number 7, Tulkas the Valiant was not born of light or gentle creation. He was the storm of fury, summoned to confront the greatest darkness. See, when Melkor unleashed his hatred upon Arda, grrr, tearing at the world's fabric, Tulkas rose with burning eyes and iron fists, and his laughter 
echoed the savage promise of destruction. The dude was not a maker or a healer, he was a weapon forged in the fires and fury of vengeance. During the First War of Arda, as Melkor sought to claim the world, Tulkis hunted him. While other Valar struggled to restore order, Tulkis shattered the Dark Lord's designs, driving him deeper into madness. The very earth trembled beneath the battle, but Tulkis, relentless and untamed, forced Melkor into shadows. It's pretty hardcore. He also chased Melkor to the world's edges and triumphed, forcing him into hiding. His strength was too great for even the mightiest foes to withstand. And yet, such power always has got a price to pay. Blinded by fury, Tolkis shattered Melkor's body but overlooked the poison left behind. And even though it seemed like the war was won, darkness returned not through brute force but through lies and deceit. Even Tolkis could not penetrate the veils of treachery that Melkor had woven. In the end, Tolkis remains the Valar's vengeful fist, ready to strike but his might cannot heal the wounds left behind. He's the hammer, not the healer, and while his fury is unmatched, shadows continue to creep back into the world. His strength, once the bane of Morgoth, has retreated to the shadows, now lying in quiet vigil, waiting for a time of great need once more to start fisting the bad guys. Ranking in at number 6, we got the OG Gandalf. Yeah, this guy was, you know, a Maya, an unfathomable force of cosmic energy from the primordial depths of existence. Huh, so he's a mother-in-law? Anyway, as a Maya, his essence was woven into the very fabric of creation and destruction, a being whose power could alter the course of worlds. His arrival in Middle-earth, disguised as Gandalf the Grey, was a calculated descent into the shadowed realm of men designed to combat the encroaching darkness of Sauron with a force veiled in apparent frailty. Beneath his unassuming exterior, Gandalf harbored a power that transcended mortal understanding. His magic was not mere illusion, but a manifestation of divine wrath and ancient fury. The tempest that he summoned against Saruman's forces, the fire that blazed through Moria's depths, and his cataclysmic duel with the Balrog were beyond displays of strength. They were harbingers of ruin. Each act revealed the raw, unbridled power capable of shattering the boundaries of reality itself. In the clash with the Balrog, Gandalf unleashed the full breadth of his celestial might. The battle wasn't just a confrontation between two Maiar, it was a cosmic upheaval, a struggle that echoed through the very soul of Middle-earth. His death and subsequent resurrection as Gandalf the White marked his ascension into a being of unimaginable power a force of retribution and bleak redemption. Gandalf's power proved a sinister force hidden beneath the veneer of wisdom. He wielded elemental forces and powerful enchantments with unsettling ease. His true strength, a tempest of raw, unrestrained energy held in check by his will. In a world on the brink of ruin, his legacy is a grim testament to the seductive danger of ultimate power a force that could both save and obliterate with equal ferocity. His presence is a chilling reminder of the immense perilous power that lies just beneath the surface, a dark abyss that threatens to engulf all that it touches. On our top 5, Sauron's origin strays back to the very dawn of creation as one of the Maiar, ethereal spirits of immense power created by Iru Iluvatar to assist the Valar in shaping the world. In his earliest form, Sauron was a being of considerable beauty and wisdom, known then as Myron. His name, translating to the Admirable, was a reflection of his initial purity and his adeptness and craftsmanship and knowledge. Dollars to Donuts says that he could have been the first ever Mr. Arda. And yet, Myron's innate talents and boundless ambition plunged him into an abyss of corruption. Lured by the insidious whisper of Morgoth, the first Dark Lord, Myron became ensnared in the very darkness he had once sought to conquer. As he embraced Morgoth's unrelenting vision of malevolence, his essence was irrevocably twisted. He was reborn as Sauron, the most devoted and fearsome lieutenant of the Dark Lord. This grim metamorphosis sealed his descent from a once noble spirit into an embodiment of profound, unrelenting evil 
forever bound to the shadowed depths of damnation. Kind of like toddlers when they start drawing on the wall. Sauron's power, once a force for order, became a dark engine of tyranny and fear. His boundless knowledge and sinister craft gave birth to the One Ring, a harbinger of unspeakable malevolence. This abominable artifact was not merely a tool to amplify his own dominion, but a perverse instrument to enslave the very souls of Middle-earth. With it, he could dominate the wills of kings and commoners alike, spreading a web of despair and control that ensnared the hearts and minds of all who fell under its shadow, like K-pop. Through the rings of power, Sauron's malignant essence infiltrated every crevice of Middle-earth, spreading his influence like a plague of shadows. Each ring became a conduit of his will, ensnaring the most formidable of men and corrupting their very souls. Their strengths became vulnerabilities, their virtues perverted into tools of his dark dominion. From his origins as a once pure Maya, Sauron's descent into monstrous malevolence culminated in an immense suffocating power that cast an unending shadow over the world. His dark sorcery, born from an abyss of vile energy, intertwined with the fate of Middle-earth, leaving a legacy of desolation so profound that its scars would fester and endure through the ages. Now on to number 4 in our countdown with Morgoth, originally known as Melkor, who was once among the strongest of the Ainur, a being whose power eclipsed even those highest of his kin. As Melkor, he was a force of unimaginable potential and beauty, bestowed with dominion over the very fabric of reality. His boundless ambition and thirst for control, however, led him down a path of cosmic corruption twisting his divine essence into something profoundly dark and malevolent. From the dawn of creation, Melkor's malevolent hunger for supremacy drove him to defile the harmony of the Valar with his insidious will. His boundless ambition twisted the very essence of existence, sending discord and desolation throughout Middle-earth. His dark yearning birthed nightmares upon the world abominations forged from his own corrupting touch. The vile dragons, embodiments of primal terror, roamed the lands, their very essence of blight upon creation. The orcs, twisted and deformed, were not mere beasts, but grotesque parodies of life, spawned from his dark sorcery. His monstrous creations reveled in destruction, their very existence a testament to his dark power. Under his influence, Middle-earth became a realm of unending dread and suffering, a shattered world where beauty was extinguished, leaving only an eternal nightmare in the wake of his insatiable greed. Let me go order this thing from Amazon real quick. See, his malevolent reign was marked by an era of relentless chaos and devastation. His power was a dark tempest, warping the very essence of Middle-earth, leaving scars of destruction that defied healing. The lands he once sought to dominate became riddled with ruin, corrupted beyond recognition. His fall from grace wasn't a mere defeat, but eternal damnation as Morgoth's shadow continued to blight the world long after his imprisonment in the void. In Morgoth, we confront the embodiment of boundless power twisted into a force of annihilation, a being whose immense and consuming darkness reshaped Middle-earth into a canvas of eternal despair. His insatiable ambition once a driving force, spiraled into a vortex of destruction that left a scarred and broken world in its wake. Morgoth's legacy is a chilling reminder of the abyss that awaits those who embrace the seductive grip of absolute power. His story, etched into the very fabric of Middle-earth, is a grim testament to the devastating consequences of unrestrained malevolence. The echoes of his dark dominion reverberate through the ages a somber and relentless shadow that taints every corner of the world's history. Ranking in at number 3 on the top 9, we've got Varda, Queen of the Stars, who is a force of radiant power, her light piercing through the deepest darkness in Middle-earth. As the creator of the stars, she's the embodiment of celestial brilliance, a goddess whose mere presence illuminates the furthest reaches of the universe. But her light's not all soft or gentle, it's fierce, blinding, and unrelenting. To the elves, she is Elbereth, their most sacred name, 
for it's her starlight that offers a fragile hope in the face of unyielding darkness. Her power is woven into the very fabric of the skies. When Melkor, the first darky dark lord of edginess, sought to shroud the world in shadows, it was Varda who ignited the stars, an act of defiance that forever set her light against the forces of evil. Her brilliance is more than illumination, but rather a divine force that the dark just can't withstand. Even Sauron, in his mightiest might of mightiness, recoiled from the sight of her stars, a reminder that the light she wields is eternal, untainted by the corruption of the world below. Her light isn't just a shield, it's a weapon. It cuts through shadow, burning away the malice that festers in hidden places. Her power is a guardian's, one that protects Middle-earth from the encroaching night, yet it's also distant and untouchable. The stars that she crafted hung above the world like silent sentinels, a constant reminder that though darkness may rise, the light of Varda can never be extinguished. Her radiance offers more than just illumination. It brings with it the unwavering promise that the light will always endure and return. Ranked at number two, we have Anwi's distant cousin, Manwi. So this guy wields a power both colossal and shrouded in secret. As the supreme ruler of the Valar, his dominion over the winds and skies is not merely elemental, but a profound command over the very essence of existence. His authority extends beyond the physical, reaching into the core of creation, dictating the delicate balance of the universe with a cold, unyielding hand. From his perch atop Quetzalcoatl's distant cousin, Taniquetil, Manwi's gaze pierces through the shadows of Middle-earth his control over the storm and tempest through relentless force. His presence looms as a reminder of his immense power, a power that shapes the world's fate and maintains its equilibrium with an imposing and somber grip. From the dawn of creation, he stood as the self-appointed sentinel against the encroaching darkness, the counterforce to Morgoth's apocalyptic ambitions. His dominion extends beyond the simple control of storms and tempests. It's an unrelenting grip on the primordial forces that govern the world's fate. And yet, this power is a double-edged sword. While he commands the air with unchallenged authority, his role as the Arbiter of Order places him in a constant grim struggle against the chaos that seeks to unravel the world. His influence is a belittling presence, a power cast across Middle-earth that ensures the world's fragile equilibrium remains intact even in the darkest of times. His watchful eyes, perpetually cast from the icy heights of the mountain peak, see through the veil of evil and despair, but his actions are often spectral and indirect. He's a guardian bound by cosmic responsibility, his power a stark reminder of the pervasive struggle between light and darkness. In the end, his immense power stands as both a beacon and a harbinger of doom to forces of evil. His dominion over the winds and skies is a force of staggering magnitude, a cold and unyielding might that governs the very essence of existence. And yet, his legacy is marred by the ceaseless darkness that gnaws at the edges of his authority. His power, while monumental, is perpetually shadowed by the encroaching malevolence that seeks to unravel all that he strives to protect. His reign serves as a chilling reminder that even the most profound strength can be overshadowed by the insidious tide of ruin that threatens to consume the universe. And finally, at number one as the most powerful being ever. At the heart of Tolkien's cosmos resides Iru Iluvatar, an entity of boundless power whose mere presence embodies both the genesis and the dark potential of existence. His will is an unfathomable force, conjuring the universe from the void with a single profound act of divine thought. This primordial creator's power is not just a tool of creation, but a conduit for shaping the very fabric of reality. From his breath, the Ainur emerged, ancient and divine spirits, their essence a direct reflection of his infinite will. Iluvatar's dominion extends beyond mere creation. It's a ceaseless command over all that exists, from the birth of life to the eventual decay that follows. His creative act wasn't just an orchestration of light, but a symphony that encompasses the full spectrum of existence, including the shadows that lurk at its edges. The universe, forged from his will, is a grand expanse of light and darkness, an intricate design bound by his eternal power. 
And yet, even this divine creation is not immune to the encroaching shadows, for Luvatar's infinite power encompasses not only the genesis of worlds, but the inevitable descent into entropy and corruption. His legacy is an eternal testament to the profound and terrifying depth of creation, a stark reminder of the dark undercurrents that shadows even the most magnificent of cosmic designs. The universe unfolds under his gaze as a grand yet grim spectacle, the struggle between light and dark, the relentless entropy creeping across the world stands as a testament to Iluvatar's inscrutable will. His power, while the source of all creation, is also a silent witness to the inexorable fall into chaos and despair. The very beauty of his design is tainted by the looming thread of ruin, an eternal reminder that even the most divine force is not immune to the encroaching darkness. Iluvatar's legacy is a haunting enigma, a creator whose boundless power is inextricably entwined with the relentless forces of decay and shadow that loom over his grandest creations. His immense, omnipotent will shapes the very fabric of the cosmos, yet it also casts a dark, foreboding shadow over the universe. This eternal power, while capable of conjuring wonders beyond imagination, is also a stark reminder of the fragile threshold between creation and obliteration. The vastness of his dominion is marred by the ever-present threat of unraveling darkness, a chilling testament to the perilous balance between the divine and the abyss. So what are your thoughts on these powerful beings of Middle-earth? Did we miss any of your absolute favorites? Let us know your opinions in the comments below, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.